Good evening. Welcome to the Time to Contemplate Your Research session. We're, we'll be discussing um, how you can apply the research that you've already been working on for your poster, how you can apply that to the PowerPoint template that we have on the LibGuide, um, on the Research Exhibition Day Guide. So um, speaking of that, let me um, share my screen with you and walk you through a couple housekeeping things before we get real into it. So hopefully you can see my screen. If you're using the central pen Wi-Fi, um, you may experience some networking problems, um, but it should be all right. Let me make the view a little bigger. Um, so this is our research exhibition online guide, which is everything you need to be successful on um, researching, creating your poster, everything you need. Um, so the URL is guides.centralpen.edu slash research exhibition. Uh, the URL to access the online guide is guides.centralpen.edu slash research exhibition. So everything that you need is here. I do want to call your attention to the events tab, which um, gives you the calendar of events that we have coming up. So right now we are at the time to contemplate your research session. In an hour, we have the APA session tackling the reference list. And then we also have a session coming up on Monday, Creative Infographics. I'll be talking about how to use some free online tools to make your posters really visually appealing um, and displaying infographics. We're going to use PictoChart, which is free, um, and we'll look at a couple other tools as well. So definitely check that out. Um, we also have a calendar tab right here. So this you can integrate into your Office 365 calendar if you use that. Um, instructions on how to do that are down here, how to import the calendar. But if you double click on this, I'm not going to do that right now, but if you click on the calendar, it will take you to the actual calendar and you can open up all the events and see details. Um, okay. So today we're talking about using the template, applying your research to the template. So I want to make sure that you know about this template um, tab right here as well. So on this template, there are two links, um, well, two downloadable PowerPoints I want to show you. The research template, which is right here, is a PowerPoint template that you can use. Um, it's guidelines for how you can display your research on the poster, um, the kinds of things you're looking for, um, the kind of information you should have on your poster. The second link, research template example, is an example that I created. I went out and conducted hours of research and actually put all my findings into the template. Um, so we will be looking at that tonight, but you can download that here. Um, you can download that right here on the template page. Okay, so first we are going to talk about what kind of information should be on each individual slide, and we're gonna talk about that in detail. Then we'll talk about if you absolutely have to use the template, um, and finally, we'll go over a few design tips for your slides and your poster. So the first slide of the template is the title of the project. Um, one thing to note is that you do not have to complete your slide in order. So for example, if you have not finalized your research question yet, then you should not be giving your poster a title until your research question is finalized. But once you have figured out what research question you're going to use um, to research and to build your poster, then you can go ahead and give your poster a title. The title should be clear and concise. Your audience should be able to tell what your poster is about just by reading the title. And be creative. Don't be afraid to lend your own voice as well. Um, if, we, if you don't lend your own voice, all the posters are going to sound very similar, and we do want you to be creative. Um, there are some example posters um, online from other colleges that I recommend you look at. The first one is um, the NCSU posters. Um, they are really great. You can see some creative titles. Um, these are digital posters. So we are going to be using trifolds, um, but 
they have really good examples of posters for you to look at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, also show you the other set of um, poster examples, the University of Texas at Austin. If you just do a Google search for University of Texas at Austin, um, you'll be able to see some of their poster samples, get ideas for creative titles, but that also are descriptive of your research so that the audience knows what um, your topic is. Okay, so for the, um, for the template that I used, the example I created, I simply titled mine Academic Libraries and Retention of Minority Students. That was my topic. Um, it's not super creative, but it is very direct. You know just by the title exactly what I researched. I researched about academic libraries, and I tried to see if there was a connection between retention and minority students in particular. All right, let's go on to slide two. So slide two is a research problem or the research question or the research statement. <clears throat> so if you haven't finalized your research question yet, then that's the next step for you. First, you should, um, you have to find a narrow enough topic that there's a manageable amount of published literature and not too much. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a Research 101 session. You can find that in the archive of the online guide. I highly recommend that you listen to that um, to give you some research tips. Um, but some good places to explore just to narrow your topic down from a really broad topic would be Credo's Mind Map, um, Gale's Topic Finder, and even Wikipedia can be an okay place to help you get a narrowed topic idea. But just a reminder, you never want to use Wikipedia um, as a source for your academic research. That's a big no-no. But it can be a good place to explore, get some ideas. Um, one thing that's really good with Wikipedia is they have lots of internal hyperlinks. So you can just spend hours clicking around, exploring. Um, so maybe you'll find something related to a broad topic that really interests you, and you can narrow it down to something more specific because you found um, an interesting link in Wikipedia that you didn't know about. You can also talk to any of us librarians about how to narrow down your topic. Um, I've already helped a few groups decide on how to narrow their topic down. Um, so we love to talk about narrowing topics. Um, it's a challenge, and so I think that's why we like it. At least that's why I like it. So once you have your narrowed topic and you're really starting to do some research, you need to decide on your specific research question. So this can be the most difficult part of the research process, in my opinion. Um, but an easy way to um, determine a specific research question is to take a common question about your topic and then limit it to um, a certain time or place. So let me give you an example here. If your topic is about the wage gap between men and women, that's a really broad topic, and a lot of research has already been done about that. But it needs to be more specific. So you could do something like, what is the average wage gap between men and women in central Pennsylvania? And then do some research there. Or you could do something like, has the average wage gap between men and women increased, decreased, or remained stagnant for the past 20 years only? and then account for inflation. So if applying a time or um, a geographic location doesn't work because that won't work for everything, um, try pinpointing to a very specific discipline or subject within your topic. So one way to do this um, is what is the average wage gap for academic librarians? Or how does the average wage gap compare between academic and public librarians? So that would be um, several ways that you could narrow down from just talking about the wage gap between men and women. Um, you can take any of those options, and hopefully that will help you. And if you're still stuck um, where to, how to narrow your topic down, then a really great place to get ideas to look th is to look through the discussion section of scholarly articles. So when I'm reading about an experiment or a study, 
um, or primary research, there should be a discussion session toward the end. In the discussion, the authors discuss further areas for future research. So to implement this method, you could find an article in EBSCO, Gale, ProQuest, um, or even Google Scholar, and find an article that describes a research study that interests you. So you want to look for majors in headings like methods, data analysis, findings or results, um, discussion, conclusion, and references. If you see those, you're on track. And if you don't see those major sections, then it's probably not um, a scholarly research study. So you could also limit to peer-reviewed articles, and that would really help you as well. So once you've found the article, read through the discussion section for state and look for statements that indicate areas of future study where more exploration is needed and areas that could be looked into further. Any kind of statement like that, um, futuristic sounding um, search is needed, any statement like that. So any of those um, can point you in a direction, maybe I should see if research has been done about that. And then you, you, that could give you a good research direction to go to, to get your research question. So ProQuest has lots of dissertations and theses, um, and they, um, a lot of them have their own section dedicated just to areas of future research, which can be found in the table of contents. So let me show you um, an example that I found. So I found this really good article in ProQuest, Dissertations and Theses. Oops, a little too big. Okay. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the table of contents. Okay, so here we are on the table of contents. Let me scroll up. All right, so you can see it begins with introduction, literature review, methodology, results. So we're starting to see those major sections, discussion, conclusions, and recommendations. So down here, I see recommendations for future re for further research, page 102. So I know if I scroll down to page 102, I can read a little bit about where I could go with my research, according to the person who wrote this. Recommendations for further research. So I was able to find in the table of contents, it told me where I can go for further research, and I could read through this section here and say, you know what, I know this uh, dissertation or this thesis is several years old now. There may be research done about this that I can find, but it's probably not a whole lot yet. This would be one way you could definitely find a narrowed research question. So, let me open up mine here. So for my research question, my specific research question was, do academic libraries contribute to a college's minority student retention rate? And then I wanted to make this slide my own. My question isn't super long. So I decided to include an image of our wonderful Charles T. Jones Leadership Library, um, since my research question is directly related to academic libraries. Okay, so the third slide are research goals. So here you want to talk about what kind of research are you conducting? Are you conducting primary research? Are you creating your own surveys and experiments and reports? Or are you looking for research that's already been done by someone else? So let me open up my example. So for my example, I am to discover primary research, studies conducted by other researchers. I did not conduct any primary research myself. I didn't create any surveys um, or conduct any experiments. So my goal was ultimately to determine if any substantial relationship exists between libraries, minority students, and retention. I also chose to include a graphic that I felt adequately represents my research question. 
Now, since this is a photograph that I took myself, I do not have to include the citation because it's my photograph and I took it. But if I had instead used a, um, a graphic, a photograph that I found on Google Images, then I would absolutely have to cite it. No questions asked, just cite it. Okay. So the fourth slide is the research approach. So now that you know what kind of information you're seeking, how are you going to go about finding it? What steps will you take in the research process to address your research goal? So for my example, for my approach, I decided I would consult with a wide variety of sources from online locations. So I ended up searching in EBSCO, Gale, ProQuest, and Google Scholar. And then I also requested two journal articles that I found citations for um, through the library's interlibrary loan service. Um, so if you find a citation that sounds like exactly what you need but we don't have access to it, contact us and let us know and we will get you that article. So I also decided what kind of content I would search for. My ultimate goal is to establish if a relationship exists between college libraries, retention, and minority students. So in order to determine if there's any kind of relationship between those three elements, I took a triangulated approach. I searched for relationships between libraries and retention, between libraries and minority students, and between retention and minority students. So I found numerous articles for all three relationships each between two of the elements. So then I studied the relationships that exist between the elements to see if the case could be made for connecting all three and seeing if libraries do contribute to the retention of minority students. Research, um, this is just a side note, research can get messy and disorganized and that's okay. A lot of research is exploratory. You're just trying different things. You're clicking all around. Um, so you might read one article and then that leads to another article and that throws you off track for a while. And that's okay. That's part of the process. So while I was going through the exploratory research stage of this process, I wasn't even fully aware of how I was approaching my research question. At first, I tried searching for all three libraries, retention, and minority students. And I really did not find any published literature connecting the three. So after my searches failed numerous times over and over different ways that I kept trying, I figured, well, you know what, let me see if I can find research at about at least two of those. So I would search for libraries and retention. Then I would find some articles. And then I would decide, you know what, I should, um, put my min minority students term in the mix there and look for libraries for minority students, um, see if I can get some articles about those. Um, and at the time, it was very haphazard. I didn't even tr like really understand how I was approaching it. But then um, my brain was subconsciously organizing my research um, and it turned out in the end to actually be very organized. So I have a visual representation of my research process later slide. Um, and so hopefully everything that I've just been talking about for the last minute or two, hopefully that will make a little more sense um, in a few minutes. All right, so slide five are key theories. The key theory slide should indicate what the published literature you've reviewed and studied says. This one slide will probably take up the bulk of your time. Now there are two ways to approach creating a slide. The first way is to draw what you've learned from your sources somewhere else like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, then reproduce um, on this slide the final version, the final draft. So the advantage of doing it that way is that you'll have a lot more information in another one than on the single PowerPoint slide. Now, I did not use this method and I wish now that I had because it would have saved me a lot of time. But I um, approached the slide a different way 
And my guess is that it's some of those of you will also end up approaching the slide. Um, I just use the slide as a rough draft, a middle draft, and a final draft. Um, so everything I initially found, I typed onto the slide. And the more I researched, the more I typed, and my words ended up being really small font and um, exploding off the slide. I couldn't really read it all. Um, and it takes a lot more time to organize all of that. Um, and the slide is continually evolving this way. Um, this is also more disorganized and messy. So you do have a higher risk of making a mistake or forgetting something, leaving something out. Um, so I would definitely take the more organized approach if I did this again and keep track of everything somewhere else, like a Microsoft Word document, and then say, here's what I want for this slide, and just pull the major points. Let me show you mine. Okay, now let me make this full size for you. So a couple things I want you to notice about this is that first, this is not the default setup of the slide. I deviated from the norm. Feel free to make each slide your own. I wanted my slide to be as organized as possible. So I organized this slide into the relationships that I mentioned earlier. So on the left, I have libraries and retention. I have major points for that. And then in the upper right corner, I have libraries and minority students um, and how those connect. And then in the bottom right, re retention and minority students. And then you'll also notice I do have one point for libraries, retention, and minority students. And that's because I found one piece of literature that mentioned a connection between all three. And it was even a pretty weak connection at that. Um, but since that was the only article I could find connecting all three, I did decide to include it. Um, so notice at the end of each bullet point, I have citations. These are the short, abbreviated, in-text citations. I have to include these because I did not conduct any of these studies myself. So I did not draw these conclusions on my own. These are conclusions drawn by other researchers who spent hundreds of hours researching and doing experiments and surveys um, and then studying all the data. So I have to give them credit for their hard work. So whenever you write anything that you did not create yourself, you have to include the citation. Um, also notice that several of my bullet points have multiple citations. And that's because I found several articles that agree on that particular point. So by showing multiple in-text citations, I'm making that point a lot stronger. So if you can include multiple citations for one point, do it. Um, one more thing about the citations. Notice that some of them have page numbers and some of them do not. Um, and this is because Central Pen requires you to include a page or pa paragraph number for most research you'll be using page numbers for quotations or paraphrases. But if you are um, summarizing in one or two sentences, you're summarizing an entire work that spans many, many pages, then you do not include the page. Just include the author and the year. All right. Oops. So slide six is your conclusion. Based on all your research, what did you find and what can you conclude? Use this slide to share with your audience the answer to your research question, if there is in some cases, your results might be inconclusive, and that's okay. That is acceptable. So you want to put that on the slide if that's the case. And if that is the case, you couldn't really conclude much of anything, then definitely tell us why you don't think there's, that you are able to conclude anything. Was your research question maybe uh, too broad or too narrow? Um, 
did the government data not go back far enough um, for your research question? Um, so that's okay to put on the slide that you couldn't find something conclusive. Now, if you have a hypothesis that you're trying to support through research, then if your hypothesis was correct or not. Was everything as you expected? Were there any surprises? If there was anything that surprised you, be sure to include it on the slide. Um, the judges would love to see, um, to, to know what surprised you. What did you learn that was surprising? So often when we're conducting really deep research and we're researching so many sources and we're getting really familiar with the literature, we'll think something like, if only I could find an answer to this. Now, if you ever have a thought like that, remember it and put it on the slide. Um, because you could include that as an area for future research as a next step. So let me go to my example. So here are my conclusions that I found from my research. So I found that um, there are so many studies out there that prove that libraries contribute to retention, but just because they're correlated doesn't mean that libraries are causing retention to be increased. Um, I also found that minority students experience more library anxiety and information anxiety um, than traditional students. And so then I included a solution that libraries need to proactively reach out to minority students to make them feel comfortable. I also discovered that libraries collaborate um, with instructors and entire departments to create high impact practices and that those high impact practices, also known as HIPs, really help to retain minority students at a greater rate than traditional students. And then I do have an area for future study here. Conduct primary research studying how minority students choose to use the library and how often and discover their retention rates. So this would be a direct experiment, a direct study, surveys, measuring how many minority students are using the library, how often are they using the library, are they using databases, are they using um, the computers, are they seeking out help from librarians and then measuring retention rates and then seeing if there is a direct link because as far as I can tell, nobody has done that yet. So that would be something to look into um, in the future. So slides seven and eight are going to be your visual aids. You can use these for diagrams, illustrations, charts, tables, graphs, photographs, etc. So if you follow this template, these slides will be front and center on your poster in the most important and eye-catching location. So it's important that you include visually appealing, relevant, and understandable graphics on these two slides. Let me pull up mine here. Let me make this big. Oh boy, some of the words are small, but that's okay. Um, if you are watching this, I would recommend that you open it up to full screen, and that should help you um, hopefully read the words. So this is a Venn diagram I created using a website for free called creately.com. Um, I will be talking about infographics next week, so I might be discussing Creately. Um, I will definitely be discussing PictoChart, though. So this is the slide I referenced earlier um, saying that I um, created a visual for my research. So this shows really how my elements act together. So I have information about libraries right here, information about retention over here, and right here in the overlap, this is how libraries and retention are related. So high impact practices are here, attendance at information literacy sessions is here, um, using library resources and services is in there, professional librarians, um, how much libraries spend on students, 
um, all of those are connected, are connecting libraries to, to student retention. So down in this section, I have minority students. So how are retention and minority students uh, connected? So you can see that in this overlap here. And then in this third section of this overlap, this is how libraries and minority students are connected. So like I said earlier, I found one article that talked about all three. So that is right here in the middle. I found that Latino students have lowest persistence rate and lowest library usage rate. However, this article did not conclude um, that the library usage rate um, contributed to the persistence rate. So like I said, it was a rather weak article, but it was the only one I could find connecting all three. And so this middle part was really my area of research. This is where my narrowed research question belongs, right here in the middle. Here is my second graphic. Um, and notice that I do include a citation for this. And that's because I did not create this myself. I am borrowing it. So I have to include the citation. Now I recommend for you that you create two original infographics, um, visual aids, because that will make for a much stronger poster for you. Uh, but I did want to show you that this is an option, but the judges will not be nearly as impressed if you borrow a graphic from somebody else. Now, if you decide that you must borrow from somebody else, make sure it's directly relevant, and not only a little relevant. You want it to be directly related to your research question, which for uh, my research question this is. Okay, so we're almost through our slides. Our last slide are the references, and that's what I'll be talking about at 8 o'clock tonight. So you must absolutely, 100%, with no exceptions, include a references slide. All of your in-text citations from previous slides must match up to a full citation on this slide. And likewise, don't include any references on this slide that does not match up to an in-text citation. Now, all your citations should be in APA format. That's how we do it at Central Penn, unless you're legal studies, in which case you want to use blue book style. Your citations should go in alphabetical order, not in the order that they appear in the slides. So even if your author with the last name that starts with a Z appears first in your slides, they should probably be last in your references list. And you'll also want to use hanging indents. So let me show you um, what mine looks like. Here's my references slide. Um, I know it's a lot to take in. There's a lot of text here. Um, but you can distinguish the citations from each other because I do use the hanging indents. So you can see. Um, Bell is an author of an article that I used. Chang, Quan, Stevens, and uh, Buonora are another. So each of these is a new article. So let me stop sharing my screen for a little bit. Okay, so do you have to use this template? The short answer is no, but this is a really great starting place, and I recommend that you definitely at least start with the template, and then if you decide to deviate, that's up to you. Um, we do want to encourage you to be create, as creative as possible. But that being said, you, there are some necessary elements that have to be on every single poster. So what absolutely has to be on your poster and is non-negotiable is a title for your poster along with the names of everybody in your group, a description of your research process, and the references slide. And beyond that, what you choose to include on the poster is up to you. You can include eight infographics. Um, you can include all text, although I probably would not recommend that because it would not be visually appealing.
healing. Um, but I did check the poster boards that we will be ordering will fit a maximum of 16 PowerPoint slides, full page slides. Um, and that's all horizontal um, and with no extra space whatsoever. So you can have potentially 16 slides, although I really would not recommend that. Um, that would be too much, I think. Um, so just a couple poster design tips. Don't use more than two to three fonts. Also, don't use sans serif fonts, or I'm sorry, don't use serif fonts fonts, only use sans serif fonts. Um, and so those serif fonts are going to be like Times New Roman. They include um, the little extra lines on the ends of the letters. Um, Calibri is a sans serif font. It has no extra lines on the ends of the letters. Um, we recommend that you use a large font size for all your slides, at least size 24. That will make it readable from a distance. Now, your references slide can be smaller. It's not as crucial that um, people are able to read your references from far away. Um, but you do need to include them on there, but that can be a smaller font. Um, and then make sure that the graphics that you create will be readable. So my Venn diagram, which is all on one slide, um, I am blowing that up into about three or four times that size. Um, and I'll be printing it out over three or four pages and then um, attaching them all together and making one really big Venn diagram so that it's readable and the words aren't too small. Um, and then make your title at least twice as big as the rest of your, the text on your poster and on your slides. Finally, don't use fuzzy pictures. Don't do it. It will look terrible. So only use high resolution photos um, because when you print them out, they are going to turn out pretty big. All right, so let me double check chat here. Okay, that is going to conclude um, this session tonight. If you have any questions, let me, um, Share my screen one last time here. If you have any questions, you can visit the online guide, which is guides.centralpen.edu slash research exhibition. And you'll find my contact information here. You can use this button to send me an email. Go ahead and give me a call. If I don't pick up, leave me a voicemail. Um, and you can also call the library's general number, which is 717-728-2500. And you can also email us at library at centralpen.edu to get in contact with us. All right, so that is going to conclude it for tonight. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. And thank you for listening, and don't hesitate to um, contact me with any questions.